G'day, g'day everyone. It's Joe from Joe Weed in Melbourne. I was just going to say good morning. Good evening. It's eight ish. Exactly. Look. Eight ish. Right on there. It's exactly what it says. <laughs> um, thought I'd say hello and get back into my lives. I was away last weekend with my family. We were on the Murray in our um, cabin in Echuca and I just didn't know if the internet was going to work or not so I figured I'd take a break. Um, so it was nice to see a couple of people messaging and hoping things were okay and all the rest of it. Things were wonderful. Away with my family is always a good thing. So I thought I would start off with showing you and I've just realised the video is around the wrong way again. But, oh well, it is what it is. We're 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 into it. We'll get going. And I haven't got my glasses on to read upside down the comments. Who has said hello? My goodness. I'm going to turn off the above light so that we can work without shadows. And then we'll be able to get to it. Rails, howdy, thank you for coming. Next best thing, hey? I wish you were here though, or I was there, either or. Um, so, g'day, g'day. I thought I'd show you tonight this amazing designer paper. I've warmed to it finally. Believe it or not, I wasn't quite sure if I liked it at first, um, but it's pretty incredible. The colors are just amazing and the designs on each of the sheets, as usual, is fantastic. Uh, so this is called See a Silhouette Designer Series Paper and it has quite a number of various colors as you can see which is probably why it why it appeals to me. So I think I've laid them in the right manner possibly where you can see one side and then the opposite side. So often with Stampin' Up! you will see that on one side of the paper can be quite demanding and quite um, intense and the opposite side can be a bit more subtle and that gives you some options to work with for them. Uh, so clearly we've got the big rainbow bright colours, um, then we move into the, the purple hues or the, the sort of ochre, ochre? <laughs> the red type colours and then going into the purples, that'll get used certainly in my world. Then we've got the blues happening here with a bit of green as well. Um, and I think I've mixed these ones up, I believe. That should be like that. There you go, those. So they really get to show off the various, um, all of the colors within the designer paper. Just saying hi, Wendy and Roseanne. G'day, g'day. Thanks for joining me. I was a bit rushed today, I thought, which is nothing new really, but I thought that I would literally be doing my live either in the back of the car or at a local McDonald's or something because hubby didn't get home earlier in time to take our youngest son to basketball because he's doing a... Um, He's refing at a tournament about 40 minutes away and we we're all a bit frantic in the end. So we thought, oh my goodness, I'm going to be, um, I'm going to be stuck on the side of the road. But I was determined I was going to be here, definitely doing it. So what I'm going to show you is a bag that I've made uh, using a tutorial from a fellow demonstrator. Let me move this. Um, I wasn't going to show you this one first, but I thought I will because then we compare. We can compare. So this is a bag that, um, oh my gosh, I've forgotten her name. Jenny had shown me through a tutorial, Jenny Haywood. I apologize, Jenny, too much going on in my brain. And she has written a fantastic uh, tutorial uh, that you will be able to follow. I'll put up the link and everything to her page later so that you can have a look at what she's got and there's also some other amazing treasures there too so this is the bag box I was looking for this for a customer who I wanted to make it for a customer who has purchased a couple of items and I wanted to put the items in the bag rather than just 
handing her a stamp set that's a bit boring. So that's what I thought I'd go with. So I just love it. I think it's just amazing. I love the size of it. Um, and, you know, it just looks fantastic. And it's relatively easy. So. Okay. Hey, Michelle. G'day, g'day. I'm trying to keep up with the comments um, on the computer and the phone flowing through as well. So with the base, and I've just realised I've not cut everything up, but I figure that that's what we'll learn together. Because um, sometimes having everything completely ready doesn't work for you as the viewer, I realise. So I've got our Stampin' Up! trimmer, which will soon be redundant because there's a new one coming. Uh, as a demonstrator, we can purchase the new one now. Uh, but as a customer, you'll need to wait until that is announced. We're not quite sure when that will be. Um, so should that be something that you're wanting, you can either sign up as a team member with me um, or you can wait until it's announced and then we'll be able to um, have that sent out to you anywhere within Australia. So thinking about this bag, we start off with a piece of cardstock. This is crushed curry and it's 27 and a half centimetres by 17 and a half. Um, and one of the things I was thinking today when I was cutting, <coughs> excuse me, with this is in order to cut it at 17 and a half, you have to go into this little bit here, which always freaks me out because it's just a bit messy with the, with the, um, with the measurements and everything. So I'm eager to see what the new one looks like and how they rectify that problem. So what I end up doing is simply cutting off three and a half centimeters from the, the width of the, the sheet because then I know that this is 17 and a half and I don't have to worry about, um, oh, hang on, let me check that. <laughs> oh, it's not right, is it? What did I say? 17 and a half. Yeah. All right, let's do this because this is actually a base, so it's not a big um, deal, um, but hopefully I've got it right. I have made a few mistakes before, so I'm hoping that it will all work out. And if not, I'll show you how to rectify that too. So on the long side, which obviously is this bit here, the 27.5, you're scoring your card stock at five centimeters and at 22.5 oh gosh see what I did there Just do it the wrong way 22.5 and then we're scoring at five centimeters on the short side so that when when we talk about the long side and the short side if I say short side it means that that's what side is up the top of your cutter whichever cutter it is that you're using so along the short side of your cardstock, you're, you're scoring at five centimetres and then at 12 and a half. And then you do a hunt for your scissors. But you know what? I'm just going to cut it on here. Now you can cut either way with these, with the score lines to make your box. You can choose to cut from the from this side or from that side, as long as it's all the, generally all the same. Um, only because you don't want to cut off one of each and then you lose your corner completely. And I'm trying not to put my head in front of the mirror, in front of the mirror, in front of the the phone. <laughs> Okay, so once you've done that, you score. You could score previously if you wanted to before you cut, but then sometimes it actually makes it a bit difficult to to score your marks because the, the cardstock is already bending up and it's difficult to get under your cutter. There we go. And if any of you are wondering or have noticed, I wonder, that my pad is upside down. Can you see that the, the logo, I don't know if you can see the logo's over here. Because what I'm actually going to suggest to Stampin' Up is that they make the glue 
side of our pads at the bottom of our um, at the bottom of it because when you are working like if you imagine getting sidetracked here but if you imagine you're working your way here I've got sleeves and I pick up a bit of glue on my sleeve or whatever it is and I end up creasing my papers and then it actually makes it difficult to use so I spin my around which sometimes makes the whole measuring thing a little bit interesting um, but I spin that around so then the glue side doesn't flick up the paper so there's a little tip for you okay back to it and I still didn't find my scissors did I only because I'm gonna need them for the tape so let me find these ones that <laughs> I'm borrowing for a little while from from good old rails they're a great pair of scissors rails I love them thank you <laughs> But they will come back to you when I see you at on stage I promise uh, sorry after on stage possibly before um, I will bring them to you take them to you bring them to you okay here we go so on the edges of your on the tab pieces that you've just cut on your cardstock you're going to put some strips of red tape um, tear and tape is okay although you do you may need something stronger so some people will use wet glue um, but that with this kind of with this part of the job wet glue would be okay uh, later on with other parts of the bag it might actually be a bit difficult um, only because they're going to be with the stress that you put against the paper and the way that it moves around the bag um, you might need some assistance to hold it there until the glue holds and of course if the glue doesn't and it moves then it will eventually dry overnight and that will make it a bit difficult um, talking about wet glue if you choose to do that here which uh, a couple of ladies in my class actually use wet glue quite a bit they prefer not to use tape at all what you could end up doing um, and this red tape is going all over my arms what you could choose to do is when you've put the wet glue all over this point here and you move that across there what I have done in the past is used pegs so you just hold that there you don't need five sets of arms um, but it just means that that holds there. I oh, see I must have been out with my measuring So that is actually slightly too high In the scheme of this bag though, it's not going to matter, but it does It would matter in some bags obviously if this was visible um, So the rule is measure twice and cut once So obviously yeah, my measurement was just out on that side oddly enough let me just put the pegs away so I can find them later. There you go. So you end up with this sturdy base for your bag because designer series paper is not as thick as normal cardstock. And so um, while you're not necessarily going to pick up the bag by its handles, you still want a bit of a, a sturdy base. So I'm going to put that aside for the moment and we'll move on to the designer paper. So I've decided I'm going to use this side of the designer paper, the really bright side. So I'm going to turn those over and using the red tape again, which might be fun to find against this colour designer paper, given the redness of it all. I went to Derby in Western Australia many years ago and any time I see these kind of colouring, it just reminds me of the red dust that seemed to be everywhere but they're fond memories I loved it so removing the paper from here sorry the, the cover of the tape and this is where your grid lines come in handy you can line these up and just overlap your piece Slightly. I've just used two 
widths of the red tape and then I'm lining those down lining those up and then giving it a good push okay I don't think I mentioned actually the designer paper needs to be 27 centimeters by 15 centimeters and clearly you need two pieces so once you've got that piece like that that's ready to go and be set away for a minute um, and the other point with designer paper which this has if you've got an image that goes a certain way there's a bit of movement within it make sure that when you lay it down on the opposite side like this that you have placed it correctly because it this it's just so frustrating when you turn it back around and you've got flowers going up and flowers going down or arrows or balloons or whatever it is that you've decided to make so this time round, I did this right. <laughs> um, hi Shirley, no problem. That's okay. I'll be back later. <laughs> you can replay me over and over and over. That's fine. Okay, so the next piece you need to get, which I've already jumped ahead, these ones are, these pieces are the bottom bands. So these initially were three and a half centimeters by 27 and you need two pieces. So theoretically, these are the same as the designer paper. I'm going to tape them together um, so that we can use them for the circumference of the bag as well. Now, I wanted a little bit of direct decoration. Um, on Jenny's tutorial, she used the scallop punch, the scallop edge punch, um, and that's retired. So I'm trying to use some current items. So I decided to use the stitched lace die set um, and this is the smaller of the two pieces that come um, so I just ran that along let me show you I ran that right against the, the edge of the cardstock I actually taped it down with washi tape and ran it through the big shot and then I moved that along matching up the edges of your die with the image so that you get that continuity along the way and you get just under two bits two um, lengths of your die let me just put this away so I don't lose it okay so as I said we're going to tape that together as well and I think I saw before that these two pieces oh no they go the opposite way that's not going to work for me maybe it was here ah oh, there we go I did see that there was a, a portion of it that would actually go directly next to each other or overlap which makes it super awesome okay right. Rail she said the new one doesn't have that gap what are you talking about the new scallop punch or which one are you talking about? <laughs> Shirley, inches drive me crazy. So I, I work in centimetres. Um, but I'm fairly sure that Jenny's actually updated her blog with both imperial and metric. Um, so that might be worth looking at. Um, Jenny Haywood is her name and you can... I googled I just sort of googled and came at this came up with the image that I liked um, and then you'll be able to follow her to her blog just don't come chasing me when you lose days and the children haven't been fed and there's no washing done because her work is fantastic okay there we go I'm just gonna snip off a little bit of gum there we go so they're done okay I promise you once you get these components done it's going to be okay so we've just got two more tasks these are going to be the handles and so the measurements of these are 2.5 centimeters by 29.5 uh, and obviously you need two for a handle um, and what you do is and I'm going to hopefully be able to show you in here you're going to score the very middle I'm not sure if the light is catching you should be able to see there's a score line in the middle from three centimeters from this point up to there you do not score 
but from there right down to the other side you will score again until the oops sorry until the three centimeter mark and I'll show you why shortly so that's what you do on both of them and the very last component is the very top um, band that goes on your bag and that is 1.6 centimeters by 27 times 2 Let me find this. Okay. okay. So here in Melbourne yesterday, we had temperatures of 30 degrees, which was wonderful because I am a summer girl. And then today we've plummeted down to 14, but predominantly 12. So it's just rude. I can't wait when we don't have to for when we don't have to wear layers and we don't have to get inside too quick because it's so cold and all of that. I can't stand the cold. So, and then the other thing is we've got daylight savings starting on Sunday, as, uh, Sunday morning as well. So like the other pieces that I showed you, use your grid lines to line up your piece and then that's ready too. And now you should have your bottom band Sorry, top band, bottom band, handles, uh, the external bag, I guess that's called, and the box. And we can start putting it together. Okay, so the only thing I haven't done is put the tape on the bottom of this. run that along and again I'm going to do that twice to give it a little bit of strength and given that the the base of our bag is a little bit wider I'm going to run it like this yeah. just so it's a little bit higher and um, can support itself a little bit more so a wonderful trick that Jenny taught me in her tutorial and it reads so well I just think it's fantastic um, and I'm going to stand up for this because I generally like to do that a trick that she said is lining this up and I, I'm choosing to put it on the line literally on here um, but what you do is you place this over so that you line it up accordingly to where it needs to be to the very bottom of your designer paper so the bottom of this box is going to be on the bottom of your designer paper and you line that up there on the corner and then you kind of just walk the other side into the right position there you go and so you just do one section at a time push that down to make sure it's on there properly and then this those up and you can crease it at the point of the box but you don't have to do it beyond that really because that just adds to the the shape of the bag then you expose the next piece next part of the tape oh, except the tape doesn't want to hopefully I'm not new moving too much for you sorry but it's just slipping out of my hands. There we go. Place that down like that. Give it a good bit of pressure. I'm going to find that red tape rubbish in the kitchen or somewhere tomorrow, I would imagine, because my cat will find it and he'll decide that that needs to be investigated. There we go. One more piece down like that. One more piece push. And then all we need to do, see, so it should be sitting quite flush, sitting along there. You can pre-push that a little bit, but don't push it down too far, obviously, because we don't want it to glue. Oh, you know what I might do before I do this? See how I've taken the tape here and here, but I've not got a bit 
just uh, mm, either here or certainly across there just as extra strength because that's where all the pressure will be right, I might do that before I uh, completely close it over but obviously don't go up too high try and turn it so that we can get the light for you no, I'm just gonna cut this off like that There you go. Okay. And then this is just a matter of pressing it down. There we go. And just assisting it to, to mold around the base a little bit. Okay. And I didn't do that bit like I should have. Here I am talking about it being strong and I've not done it properly. So that's all right. So we remove this tape. Like I said, I'll make the mistakes for you because then <laughs> you can just make it all and it's fine. Now with this design, obviously there's no pattern to occur that will continue up here. So it does make it joining up a little bit difficult. But what you can work on is lining up the ends of your designer paper. And hopefully I've done that well enough that it will sit. Okay, so let me show you what I did in with this one. Um, because there's the design that continues up here, I just had to follow the track of that sort of scalloped edge as such um, so that then my bag remains reasonably well shaped and there's no deformity as such okay so you can see it's coming together there's the the main body of the bag hey Sasu my goodness I haven't seen you for ages how are you how is your family nice to see your name pop up Okay, so we're on to our next thing. Okay, I'm going to get this band ready and I'm deciding, I'm just looking at it because when you, when you use a die, you actually obviously make the, the cut through the cardstock and sometimes it looks different depending on which side you're going to use. So I've decided that I want to use the, the side that was pushed down um, and so then uh, I just think it gives a nicer finish and that's what I want on my bag. So, cut that off. And then this one. Once you've done that main part of the body, the rest of it actually is reasonably easy. Um, that's probably just the hairiest bit is putting that part of the bag together. So, once again, you could choose to only work in sections so that you're not sort of tying up your fingers and all that sort of thing. I'm just rolling this back because it's gone over the edge a little bit. So I like to work a little bit backwards <laughs> and so I'll have this upside down a little bit to where I am. I'm just trying to find, oh no the join Okay, I'm going to go against what I just said because I do want to go the same way that I did earlier. So the double, the designer paper finished under here, which is what I want to do so that it all sort of starts and finishes in the same area. And so I'm going to put that on in the same place. And you can hear Tiger meowing in the background, wandering past saying hello. Okay. So we'll line that up there and then it's just a precarious game to ensure that you're lining up your cardstock reasonably straight. And if there's a couple of little imperfections, you will probably find that nobody else can see it, just you, um, which is always the way. But 
it's just practice. Just keep going. You know, use some retired cardstock or use some paper that maybe you don't like really, really well, but you want to give this this tutorial or someone else's tutorial a go. And um, that way you can have a bit of a practice. Hmm, why is that so much longer? I'm going to cut this off. Because I don't want it right on the very corner because that's actually a lot of pressure for the, the cardstock. So what I'm going to do, I'm just coming out of the, the camera shot, I'm sorry. I'm going to cut that off there. And then this is just going to go like that. So there's actually not a huge difference in the image. Like it kind of flows on. So that will be okay. All right, there's the bottom piece. Hey, Sarah. G'day, g'day. Welcome home again. All right, so I'll do the top band and then I'll show you the handles because they just amaze me. They look fantastic. I think they're wonderful. So Once again, tape all the way down onto this because this is the top border. Now I guess there's no reason why you couldn't um, do some form of decoration if you wanted to for the top um, the top of your bag or you can just leave the detail in the bottom. You know, it's completely up to you. It just depends on how much um, how many borders you have or if you want to do from the bottom you want to do the same as the top. Um, completely up to you, obviously, your designs. That's what I tell people in my class. It's your work, your design. Um, okay. So, starting, excuse me, starting around the same point that we did before, I'm going to, which is around here, trying to find it, I'm going to place this directly at the top of your designer paper. That's all you need to do. And you just run that right around. And the top's actually easier because the, the top is so open and it just flows. Whereas down the bottom you've got the corners and you know, all of that. So, oh, I think I was out of camera then, I'm so sorry. Out of shot. So here you go. Just like, oh, I'm going a bit crooked. Can feel that a little bit. There we go. Yep. And then that will end up right back where we began. There we go. Give it a bit of pressure, a bit of push. Okay. So there you go. That's starting to come together. Now I guess. Given the height of this border here, I could have cut that down if I wanted to, but I didn't I didn't think about that at the time. But I could because then obviously all of this design will be um, a greater section. But it's completely up to you. Okay, so the handles. Now remember I said that you don't score from the edge until three centimetres. This is so that you can fold this bit so where you've burnished it where you've scored it you just fold that in you could use a bone folder if you wanted it just depends obviously on how harsh you want that but don't fold beyond that point I'll do that with the other one I think this is going to end up being my longest video <laughs> For someone who didn't like doing them and i'm slowly getting into it i think about it all week wonder what i'm going to make what am i going to say sometimes what am i going to wear <laughs> all right so on these handles you burnish just one side again to that point to that three centimeter point and you can go back the other way if you like as well so that you end up with the two openings like this and then you do the same for the other side. So not, not super duper harsh, but just, just enough. Okay. 
I am going to now use a hole punch to punch some holes into them, into the edge, and then attempt, oh, you know what I'm going to do, I'm going to remove one side and swing that around because then you can line it up in the same, the same distance. There you go, and then you've just got to turn it around again to line them up so that they're either all going to be all correct or they'll be all wrong consistently and that's okay too. <laughs> okay. So, I am looking for... Oh, here we go. Just realised I've only got two um, brads, which I wanted four, obviously, given that it's a bag. So let me just find those. And this is the only things that I'm using today that are retired because I realised I haven't got any brads from um, from the current catalogue. So I'm going to have to rectify that. Okay. So what you can do now is work out where you're going to attach your handles to the top of your bag. And hole punch it. And then try to line that up accordingly with each side. And with the last bag it was easy, as I said, because I just counted in the amount of particular patterns they were, there were scallops or, you know, whatever it was, and that was easy. Whereas this is a bit more of just using your eye and going for it. So, let's see where this one goes. This isn't going to work for me very well. Ooh, I'm making my hole a bit bigger. That's a bit dangerous. <laughs> Hopefully that will cover, be covered with my brad. So that should help a little bit. Oh, I think the wheels are falling off a bit. Here we go. Oh, that's not lined up. That's all right. Let's see how it goes. Now, remember we, we curved it. That's so that when we attach it, let's go this way. So that when we attach it, it flows along well and easily. Um, otherwise it would be like a triangle type situation so you just sort of make the cardstock work for you to go around like this here we go there we go see so you end up with this this look with the handles being open which is kind of how it works with leather on handbags. Okay. And then we do the other side. And while I really like this crushed curry, I think maybe the bottom border should have been shorter because it's covering our beautiful designer paper. So, last one. that on there and pretty much that is almost completed I'm going to make a tag or a little um, flower or something as well onto it but that ultimately is the way that it finishes my husband's just walked in is watching me <laughs> he's making me a bit nervous go away <laughs> so You do, Sarah? Do you? I wondered. I'm not quite sure. That's all right. So anyway, that bit's done. So what I was going to show you is I'm going to bring in... I was going to do Poppy Parade because that's... Um, Poppy Parade is one of the colours in here with our paper, but I wonder if I should do the crushed curry, which means... Which means... I. Which means I drop you on your head because I'm trying to find the right colour. <laughs> oh my goodness. So, let me find the ink. I've crushed curry and then I can fix up 
the stand. I'm so sorry. Okay, crisis averted. All right, crushed curry with. I'm going to use the morning, the good morning magnolia stamp because that's generally the only flower that I've got. So it doesn't doesn't quite match the image that's on the um, that's on the designer paper. But I'll see. Otherwise, I might change it. So here we go. I can do that. Cover this up before I put my sleeve in it. Um, And let's get out the Magnolia Memory Dies. And I can't find the flower. Oh, there it is. It's hiding. There, that's the piece we want. Okay, I'm just going to grab my Big Shot. Did anyone see the post that I put up, I think last week or the week before, where I was um, following a tutorial in order to clean my Big Shot? It's been easily five or seven years since I've cleaned my Big Shot and I pulled it apart, washed it all and then put it all back together again and oh my goodness, what a huge difference it makes. There we go. No more cracking and clunking and sticking and all of that. Amazing. Just amazing. Now I'm going to also cut out while I'm here a piece of the window sheet because I did it with my other tag. Where whichever image I stamped out, I used, there's a bit of creaking, I used the same um, with the window sheet and it just sort of gave it a little bit of a lift. I found it really interesting. So, okay. So can bring this back in. So using the hole puncher. Oh my goodness, it's my husband. He's been dying for about four weeks now. And he won't go and get checked out. Won't take anything for it. Just continues to let us exist with that noise, my goodness. So, I forgot I need to wrap it around the bag, of course. Here we go. And then I've used a piece of hessian and I've removed a thread of it. And so I'm just using that to tie my tag up. I'm actually not going to put a sentiment on it because I haven't quite decided what I'm, oops, what I've decided, what I'm going to use it for, I mean. Um, so. Cut that off. Can you send me Rails? The link is on my on this page. Maybe you know, like ten days ago or something. But when so when I get off, I'll I'll tag you in it. Um, certainly, it's really easy. Just it's an Australian woman, um, and it's a YouTube video. Uh, it's not difficult. You just need a screwdriver, Phillips head screwdriver, um, and obviously the Allen key from your Big Shot. Um, so I think that's all I'm going to do with it. So you can see my little tag will have just, it's got a little bit of shine to it because I've used the window on top um, and just adds a little bit of sturdiness to it. I haven't glued it together or anything like that, um, but it just, I don't know, I just like it. Just add something to it. So there is the two bags, same, same, but different. Um, any of the current products that you've seen today you can purchase from me and uh, all you need to do is go 
onto my Facebook page and send me a message or you can have a look at my uh, online page as well, my online shop, uh, which is joeweedon.stampinupnet and that way you can get in contact with me or you can purchase things yourself online without me and you can send the the products will be sent directly to you. Um, just be sure though I've learnt that if you mark yourself as not wanting to be in contact with me which is quite okay it means that I can't assist you if you ever get stuck so if you think that maybe you might need help at some stage make sure that you allow me to make contact with you because I can't do that without your permission obviously. Um, so thanks for looking and watching and learning from me. I'll put the links up of Jenny's tutorial um, and if there's any other questions along the way that I've missed, I'll certainly uh, come back and answer those. Have a good night, stay warm, and I'll see you on my live next week. Thank you.